Hopefully there. There we go. Looks like it's working. All right. Okay, we'll see it's nine o'clock. Um, and as I mentioned, and everyone here knows, uh, Pete cannot make it today. So I will be running the meeting on that. We should read probably what statement here we have regarding who all is here and such. We currently have Kevin Will, Joe McClone, Mary Craig, and Jack Spearings. Um, we also have a uh, someone from the public, Steve Rossum, is here from the public on that, as well as some park and rec people. Um, our agenda, I'm gonna call the meeting to order and make the open meeting statement. This meeting and all other meetings of this committee are open to the public. Proper notice has been posted and given to the media in accordance with Wisconsin statutes so that the citizenry may be aware of the time, place, and agenda of this meeting. As stated, uh, we have all members of the supervisors here other than Pete will be considered uh, excused. <coughs> We need to review and approve the agenda. Is there any additions to it or changes wanting to be made? Otherwise, a motion to approve the agenda is handed out. So moved. Mary. Mary. Moved. Second. Jeff. Made and seconded. Any other further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 So moved. We have to approve the minutes of the previous meeting of March 1st, 2022. Any additions or corrections on the minutes of March 1st? I move so. Second. Motion Two. made and seconded. Any other further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 So moved. <coughs> Public comment. Steve, do you have anything you want to say or anything? You're you're in our public today. <laughs> Has a date been set for the tree delivery on the tree orders yet? They're looking, I mean, that's land and water, uh, but they're looking at, uh, I think around the 20th or something like that. Maybe that's the day they come in. Yep. So that's the day they come in. So like whatever weekends right after that out. In the calendar, right? You could always stop upstairs and talk to Brian. Yeah. If he's in water in the yep. office. He's All right. Office. They're waiting for confirmation from the uh, nursery yeah. before they send out the postcards, but they'll send postcards and everything to everybody. So All right. thank you. Thank you, Steve. Uh, we'll move on to the Number six on the agenda, possible cell tower placement on fairgrounds property. What's that, John? Okay, well, I just wanted to give you a heads up on this. And then I think what, you know, if, you, if you're if you okay with the idea, then we would have a motion and stuff at the end. But I have a handout here. I should have handed that out earlier. But uh, basically it's, uh, what's happening is the uh, representative for U.S. Cellular um, is actually a contractor working with U.S. Cellular has contacted us about the possibility of placing a uh, uh, cell tower at that facility. If you want to look along, but uh, and then <clears throat> so they said that they're looking for something in a certain radius of wherever, and our property fell in that. They sent us a letter <clears throat> asking if we'd be possibly interested in that what did they offer you for nothing yet i mean would there that's that would be negotiated later this is just uh to see if it's a possibility they want to gather their pool they're going to look at which site would be most advantageous to them and then then they would approach us with um this is what we would like to do this is how much we're willing to offer and then a contract this letter of intent that's on the thing I just handed out. Um, basically, this just says that, yeah, we might be okay with it, but I ran it past Diane and everything before I signed it. <clears throat> and it says right on there, it's not a contract. It's not binding. It's whatever. It just gives us the, 
it just gives us cellular the thing saying okay that they might be interested in this let's move forward and see what the next step is well the i contacted jeremy um the trader there the city's manager and uh and he was you know the, he i asked him what they would need from us to be able to do something like that and he had a list of things you know like hey we need to they would have to have a special meeting to talk about it and decide if it's something that would be allowed there or not um it is close to residential it is uh zoned as a park um so jeremy was like well we'd have to look at what if that's an allowed use for that or not so there's nothing saying i mean the city could say no we're not going to allow that and and that's no skin off our back. That's their zoning. It's a city. Right, right. right. And it's uh, I talked to county zoning to make sure there's nothing we had to do there because it's in the city limits. We it's it's the city. So, um, but that's not our problem. That's U.S. Cellular's problem. If they decide that this is a site they want to go to, they would have to work with the city and say, okay, this is what we got. This is what we're hoping to do. Is this allowed? Um, I know Jeremy suggested, you know, maybe the Lakeview property out that way would be better because you're not right next to a bunch of residential, but no. um, the U.S. Cellular people were kind of like, well, we do have a pretty tight radius we're trying to fit this tower in. You know, I assume there's some sweet spot there for being close to the highway and all the buildings around. I don't know what they're looking at, but basically all this does that I signed was saying that we may be interested, talk to us. You know, so the within a few weeks or something, I think they're going to get together with U.S. Cellular and decide whether this is a site they want to pursue or not. And then at that point, that's when we would start negotiations on, you know, what what exactly they're going to do. What he told me was it'd probably be about a 250 foot tower, a uh, freestanding one, no guidelines. Um, I forget what he said. Uh, it's a relatively small footprint that they need for this thing. Um, so it wouldn't impact our operations at all. Actually, we're on the back of this is a map, um, kind of a poor, uh, poor map. But if you if you got the triangle on the bottom there, that's about where they're planning on putting that, or they're where they would like to put that tower. And it's back where we got these piles of dirt and junk back there, where we're trying to get rid of that stuff anyway. Um, so it really wouldn't impact our parking at all, which is the only thing we really use this spot for is parking during fair. Um, and there's already power there. So there's a transformer out there. So that's a good site for them for that reason. I think they'd want to go on the way we could help. Well, exactly. You know, I was like, <laughs> I don't, I don't know. There was one up there and they had to take a down to the airport. Oh, see, maybe that's part of this sweet spot thing. You know, I don't know. That's, that's, and there is one by Lakeview Man or not Lakeview Man, nursing home there. Yeah, back in the old sausage plant. Yep, there's one there, and that just makes sense that it's that sweet spot. Yeah, so there was one on the hill, and they made him take a dog out of the airport. And when I was talking to uh, Ryan with zoning, because they're they've been dealing with all these internet towers and all this stuff. The yeah, um, I just was talking to him and he's like, boy, if you get something like that, it'd be a good deal because there's revenue, a fair amount of revenue that comes in from these leases. Um, and he says average would probably be about 1400 a, a month. I have, yeah. I have a friend many years ago, mm -hmm. my son's age, at a home west of town on 54. And they went to the neighbor of him and said, we need to put a tower up here. We'll pay you this amount of money. He said, you're not putting no tire on mine. So five acres away, they knocked on his door and they've made every house payment for him since. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. You know, we, we, had, we had that near our old house too. They put a tower back behind us. No one approached us. I'd have been like, heck yeah. But, uh, and the field, the farmer's field behind us, they put that tower up and yeah, he, it was a good good chunk of payment. Good for both. He was, good for both. Yeah, yeah, you know. So it's, I mean, it kind of, when I first approached uh, Diane and Heidi on this, um, they're like, well, we can't, we can't put it up because uh, there was some ordinance that said we, we could, oh, it was the contract term and whatnot. They, oh, we can't do a long-term contract like that. You know, it's like, well, I mean, we're putting all these internet towers up all over the place, spending hundreds of thousands of dollars to do it. These people want to come and pay us to do it. You know, <laughs> like, why not let them, you know? Um, right, grants to put towers up and we get one the other one. Yeah, so um, they they saw the <laughs> the logic of that. They just 
wanted to figure out a way, you know, that that could happen. And that was when, when I talked to the contractor there that's working for U.S. Cellular, that's why he came up with this 20 terms of five years each because the county has an ordinance that says you can't have a lease longer. And right. Technically, it's three years with two renewals, but whatever. I mean, that is the details that would have to be worked out with the contract negotiating with public property committee. What I would like from from the park committee is to say yes or no, whether you think this is an okay thing to pursue. It's okay. not saying- Make a motion that's okay to pursue. Okay. Motion been made to uh, pursue, look into the possibility of a cell tower. Is there a second to that? I'm second. Okay, motion made and seconded. Is there any further discussion? The city of Waiwiga is ultimately responsible to allow it, right? Yeah, they would be the zoning aspect of it. Right. So they I would, mean, because it's in yes their, no. it's in no. their city limits and- Just yes, through uh, them? They say, no, that's it's right. done. That's right. Yeah, yeah. that's right. That's their, yeah. Their, and they should have that right. They yep. should have that right. Exactly. I, that's it's just no, so we were aware no of No skin that. off our back. You know, we got well, nothing into it. And uh, it's, it's a matter of respecting them too. Yep. And that. Any further discussion at all on the motion? All in favor say aye. 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 All right. So moved. Cool. You want to do the seasonal employee thing? Yeah. Sure. I wish that I had a really <laughs> you know, yeah. awesome thing to update you on, but if you got any names, I'll pay them five dollars and all more than you pay them to rake my yard. I yeah. <laughs> yeah. We don't have any applicants. Highway doesn't have any applicants. I mean, the unfortunately that's just how it is everywhere. Um, as far as what we have done to try and recruit people, um, I did attend a job fair at in London High School, which was um, pretty educational for me, just getting to talk with other employers and, and the students. Um, everyone's feeling the same effect. There's just a, a lack of people interested in working right now. But so... I have one more job fair coming up that's at the high school here in Wapaka. And that one is geared towards individuals that are in their senior year that don't have plans for secondary, post-secondary education, mm -hmm. or, you know, they're, they're really pushing those individuals toward this event. So we'll see. Um, HR had contacted all the schools. And they obviously they used all the same job, um, boards and job net connections that are out there. But they were actually gonna go back and contact the schools again um, and target uh, teachers and their, um, the potential for those individuals to work part-time, okay. which I think is a, a, at least a good avenue to explore. Um, I also contacted um, a couple of individuals from Department of Health and Human Services. I know that there are some of those folks that um, are just working with people with employment in mind. Um, that's, you know, I mean, it's just another opportunity as well as um, one of the contacts from ADRC, which they actually have an interesting program that's geared towards individuals that are beyond retirement age that want to re-enter the workforce. So. Yeah. What's the cool part of that one? The cool part of that one is that program, we would not pay those individuals. They are reimbursed through the STEP program. So what do you offer? Roar? Um, because the wage scale increase was um, approved, um, we can go from anywhere from just below $14 an hour up to just below $16 an hour. $16 an hour? Yeah, and, and because our individuals will often work at least a partial day on the weekend, they'll get uh, time and a half yeah. for that day too. Um, so what do you think, Ann, is the, even though we have five million more jobs available than we have people unemployed, what, what do you think is any, any ideas on what could be done to encourage this, someone to work for us for the seasonal? Um, one of the more interesting contacts that I had at that job fair was with a woman um, from the Foundry's HR department. And they're in schools 
as young as middle school, and they are hoping to make contact and introduce themselves in the career possibilities that early oh. on. So um, I've had some conversations with um, Mandy and HR about how potentially we can make some contacts either through projects um, or you know community based or with the schools. Um, but that's you know that's something that has to be developed and yeah. we don't have that yet. So, but I mean, I honestly, I don't, I don't think there's an, an easy answer. I also don't, I mean, I did a little research on um, just some government sites that do forecasting for employment, specifically um, trending, um, and they survey students, and it was a little discouraging to see that the number one thing that um, students that were surveyed wanted more career information on was becoming a professional athlete. Oh. So, I mean, some of this, I don't, I mean, are we at a point where there are certain, you know, certain career paths that just aren't going to be as appealing? That could be, you know, we could be one of them. Maybe you're going to need to look at your summer work and say, this is what we can do with the staff we have, and this is what we can oh, yeah. do. Yeah. Maybe cut some paths and maybe leave, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You can't get 10 gallons in a five gallon container. Right. And, and so I think you got to rethink this whole process. Yeah. And I had talked with um, the director from Portage County Parks um, recently, also just to actually I called him, kind of wondering if they had anyone they weren't going to hire. And he said, It's funny <laughs> you called me because I did the same thing with the city parks. Oh, yeah. yeah. And he said they didn't have anyone for me either. Yeah, Walmart's um, adding 50,000 plays right now. Don't you think all those college kids and all that, that's where they're going? Yeah, and it's, I mean, it, know, with, with some future things and good and good money and good benefits. Good money and benefits. Yeah, and the reality for us is we do, I mean, it's a it's something that's on my mind daily about how we restructure things. I mean, right now, the I it's like not likely that we'll get anyone. So, that's right. And that's mean, why I threw that. Answer. Yeah, I mean, so reality says we don't. I mean, we still have the same, the same facilities, and probably this year more use, at least at the fairgrounds, as people are more comfortable um, yeah. being around other people, renting, you know, mm -hmm. for group events. So yeah, that's reality. That, that's got to pay its keep. Well, and that's you know that's what we're looking at you know as a as a staff you know Anne's been looking at this and and talking with her folks and. You know, how are we going to cover, you know, and what, like you say, what can we, what can we cut back on so we can actually cover, you know? Where people are cleaning the fairground stuff for everybody. Maybe you need to add that into there that they do the cleaning when they lease it. You know what I'm saying? Because then they have to come up with the people to make it right. Because you, you, you can't put 10 gallons in a five gallon container. Don't ever yeah. forget that. My grandmother had a different phrase, but very similar about a <laughs> five pound or three pound yeah. sack. And I, I mean, but, I'm also, you know, I want to be sensitive to the people that we have working for us now that, I mean, is another thing that I talked about with the director from Portage County, you know, I mean, he's afraid he's going to have a mutiny with his full-time staff. And so I don't, you're going to burn them on losing. Right, That's what you're going to right. do. Yeah. I mean, you start overloading people with, the, you know, perhaps the tasks that they um, didn't sign up for, you know, no. I mean, then, then where are you left? So How much, what, what's the budget for our seasonal? Twenty thousand dollars. Twenty thousand. So we yeah. can get to at that high rate without a lot of overtime. Um, we can fit them in, but it'll, well, be, it'll be tight. What I was thinking of, and, and what you know, kind of building on what Joe said here, is that you know you're not going to get part-time people, and it, it's difficult, especially when someone like Walmart or even McDonald's. Um, you just drive down okay. 10, you can see all the signs. Well, yeah, you, you got more jobs. <laughs> than 20 bucks an hour. I mean, <laughs> on that. Put your $500 sign on when you walk in the door. Right. Yeah, one of the things that we were talking with HR, you know, is we've never in the past offered like part time, you know, like we've always had full time seasonal, right? So right. one of the things that's new this year, and I think the highway was doing that too, maybe, yep. was offering it's out there saying hey if you, you know if you want to work three days a week or something you know or if that is more appealing to somebody that's something we're trying but so far nobody's bid on it you know well yeah i, I get my point was actually more of maybe come 
budget time that we're talking about here is that perhaps we need to look at somewhat what you said, but I was looking at more of a full-time position um, mm -hmm. because you're already putting $20,000 in your budget. Now, obviously that's not going to cover, you know, someone coming full-time, but more of a permanent type of situation. And maybe we'll have to look at the fact of adding another full-time individual year round in order to make this work. Well, and you know, there's another doom and gloom thing to look at is our full-timers are kind of at the, I mean, they can go pretty much a lot of different places and get more money. Right. right you know, right. so it's just like, you know, if we make it unappealing to them, you know, to take away the benefits of, of, of uh, their position, you know, where they actually had a little, little more free time and whatever, you know, we're going to lose those folks, you know, well, that's why I'm saying yeah. maybe you should look at, you already have 20,000. You're partially there to having a full-time position already. Mm -hmm. So why not look at maybe adding a, one more full-time year round position, which would allow you at least to have one person that you, you know, during the summer and, you know, during the winter, obviously, Maybe it's a little different circumstances, but uh, the fact is, I, I think you have to look at the next year's budget that allows for something of that nature. Cut less grass and cover what you got to do. Mm -hmm. You know, I got to, I got to side with that because the city has four open jobs, absolutely zero yeah. applications. Yeah, and the yeah. other night at the county meeting, Casey said the same thing. He says, we got room for eight. Says, we haven't got one application. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, you could, you're doing the right thing. Don't get me wrong. You can do whatever you want to try to entice somebody. There's nobody out there. There's nobody. They yeah. really don't want to come to work. Yeah, I think the, right now, like the only hope we got is maybe some, some employee's kid or something is going to get forced to come work for us, you know. Um, that's in the past, it's worked out pretty good for us. You know, yeah, people together a Saturday, Sunday crew, maybe, maybe some people that work five days a week with one extra money and be willing to work. You know, another so big you know, problem is they got to be 18. Yep. Yeah. You know, and I, she's right. And I agree with that. High school boys. Oh my God. There's got to be umpteen of them out there that would be good workers, but they at 18, you can't hire them. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I don't know. I just, yep. My last year I had. I actually had two individuals that had um, kids that would have worked for us last year, and yeah. I could have gotten them. And once you once you get them, the likelihood of them coming back, yeah. you know, and that's those two people. But I mean, yeah. So by next year, well, this year I contacted them, and they're not available. You no, know, if I, so. you get somebody a kid, a high school kid, senior in high school, he's seventeen and a half, whatever. He's a good farm boy. He knows everything about machinery and how to go to work in the morning, how to get up in the morning and show up every day. And mm -hmm. Can't give you a job. You're not 18. That's just yeah. That's sad. Of, but there's not a lot of farm boys anymore. Yeah, and that's, that's been the problem. That's why you want to get them on one show. Up. That's the problem. That's <laughs> well. In the reality, there is you know everyone that's their you know their first thing. It's like they're the perfect individual, but. It's yeah. more advantageous for them to stay in the farm a lot of times well, now. Don't, you know, don't I, mean, I mean, everybody had 15 milk cows when I grew up. Now yeah. it's huh. 5,000 5, down there. You know? well, they didn't have milk trucks yet. Then. They still had right. corn right. right. <laughs> <laughs> When I was 17, I worked two jobs because I couldn't go to the beer bars. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I, I think one of the points, and I, I, I hear this all the time, and I, I, I don't want to be contrary on things. Right now, the way it is right now in America, we have more jobs than we have people who are unemployed. That's the bottom line. When you're talking Wisconsin's in great shape, we're talking 3% or less for unemployment, but we have all these jobs available. And uh, that's why I'm saying it may not be, you know, like more wages or something. It, there just are not people available. It's not that people don't want to work. It's the fact is that they can pick whatever they want and they can get the higher wage and maybe better environment to work rather than working, say, for instance, what you have available for them. So I think we got, you know, you're doing everything you can do. And I think I don't know how you could do anything more given the circumstances. There's there's no supply there. There's, there's no people available to even work the jobs. And you know, I think we're going to have to kind of 
you're going to have to, I should say, not we, but you're going to have to work through the summer somehow, as you have, I'm certain, before. And, you know, maybe look at next year's budget when it comes due as to maybe there's other incentives you could come up with on that. But it, it just isn't, there just aren't any bodies to do it. And you have to be 18, in other words, huh? You have to be 18. Yeah, if, if they're under 18, they have to be 100% supervised. So they would... Yeah. It would have to be somebody's mini me, you know, oh. everywhere. They would have to be with a full timer, you know. Yeah, I, and, and that's not going to work. It don't. Uh, that doesn't solve a problem. No. <laughs> you're not going to be able to cut the grass this year that you did last year. So you're going to need to prioritize your work of what you want to do that fits among your people, and as you can add some help in there to do it, you can expand out. But you don't want to get behind on the on the minimal. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Well, I know if I get two days behind in my grass, it's a nightmare. <laughs> well, that's the thing, too. We, uh, we are contacted from the city. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, when the city threatens to uh, find you yeah. for yeah. cut it and turn it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, but, any, more, any more on that? I, I yeah, I mean, we can keep beating it, but it's a um, dead horse. So doing a good job of it trying, but what are you going to do? Yeah. It's a different world today. Yeah. So, um, that's let's at. move on. Number eight. Supervisor reports. Anyone got anything they want to? If not, how about project update? <coughs> or Ann? Well, I'll let you start, Ann, since I can't breathe. Um, we, yeah, I didn't spoil it too badly earlier, but uh, our docks are in, landings are open. So, Hills and Shaws, and it's going to be this weekend, it's going to just be a madhouse at both places. Yeah. Um, there were really no differences as far as um, getting the <clears throat> equipment and crane out on site this year. Um, I know we talked about that in the past about the transition from the ownership for our, our crane operator, and that was a, a non issue we did for the first time in the 16 or 17 years I've worked with that crane, have an equipment failure. So <clears throat> that was resolved the day of. Um, as far as uh, other things this time of year, um, just in general, this is when we start opening things back up that were winterized at the fairgrounds. So we have a couple of early events. We had a 4-H event this past weekend, and then we'll have our big cap sale this coming weekend. Um, and as the weather allows, we'll start opening for the remainder of the grounds out there. And then the end of the month, uh, last Saturday in April, is always our big storage removal. So this nice weather that we have coming, we'll start actually getting calls for people that are to get their boats and stuff out early. So that'll be um, busy for the person that's the contact for that. Other things in the parks, we're working actually right now out at Camp Vic, getting those um, shower house buildings to the point where we can open them for use. And then same thing in the parks as weather allows. I'm waiting for some more consistent, warmer nighttime temperatures before we really open up a lot of our sites around prepping those so that we're ready to go. That's pretty much it for me. Uh, and I can throw in some here too, uh, snowmobile and ATV grants. I got, uh, I got all those applied for. There's one bridge we're applying for too. Uh, I think we talked about that at a previous meeting. Um, so those grant applications are, are due on the 15th, but I got them all in already. Um, I just wanted to get that behind me so we can continue on with other stuff. Um, that uh, Gill's Dock, uh, the accessible one for canoes and kayaks, we were talking about um, that grant meeting is on August 12th, where they decide on if they're gonna fund it or not, uh, the Wisconsin Waterways Commission. So I will be attending that uh, via Zoom. Um, I was saying before the meeting, you know, I was kind of excited about this. You know, I normally don't like these Zoom things, but that one's kind of handy because uh, in the past with those funding meetings, I had to go down to Madison, you know, sit around all day waiting for your little part to come up. Now I can just dial in and <laughs> bang, uh, only waste about a half an hour and waste whatever. You know, it take about a half an hour or so of my time. So. Hopefully that'll go through It's, I mean, it's ranked pretty good. It's about in the middle of the pack. They got plenty of money. They should be able to 
fund it. We'll see. And, and they'll know that on the other end, you got yeah. to get Yeah, and, and I talked to uh, the DNR rep for that yesterday. She wanted to coach me a little on what to tell the council there or whatever. So um, I think I'm on the same page as them. And I said, you know, a big thing is, I said, can I mention the one from Wyawiga, you know, because they funded that too. That was the same council. So I, was, I just... I'm going to mention the why we go on and saying, hey, you know, they're pumping people yeah. into the river. We want to take people out of the river, do the same kind of dock, everything. It'll be real good for everybody. Mm -hmm. And she seems to think it will be, shouldn't be any problem. So that's coming. Um, the, uh, uh, with Christie's retirement coming here in June, um, we've got our uh, new person, uh, Jennifer Monty. Uh, is her name. Um, and she's actually up there today. She's kind of shadowing Christy. We wanted to get her in there um, to do billing uh, a couple cycles. Uh, so this is the first step in billing for the PTF. Uh, Christy held off till today to really run all the reports and all that stuff. And, and then she's going to go over a bunch of other things today. And then I think Thursday, she's coming in for half a day. Uh, we're going to have her go up to the PTF and kind of see what happens up there so she can, you know, put two and two together when she's doing all the, the paperwork stuff for that. And then Ann is going to take her on a, on a two cent tour of the fairgrounds because uh, we don't have a whole lot of time, but uh, kind of show her the buildings down there and what do we do and and because she's the one that will be doing all the contracts and all that stuff. So it'd be good for her to have a good idea on what. Is she what, a new employer or she transfer in? From she's new. She's mm -hmm. new. Yeah. Um, and uh, seems like a real nice lady. Um, should uh, did really well at the interview and stuff. So we're hoping, hoping everything works out. Um, and uh, we'll make the best of our, our time we have with Christy. <laughs> we're going to have overlap for at least a month. We were hoping for a full two month overlap, but yeah. um, things being what they are, um, it was kind of a slow process. Even there, you know, I um, always talk about these HR issues or whatever, you know, just getting someone to say, yep, I want this job and I'm going to do it, you know, they basically are interviewing us, you know, <laughs> it's the shoes kind of on the other foot with things, you know, it's kind of, kind of interesting, but, um, but is what it is. So that's coming. Uh, the poor farm. I don't know. You might hear something about this um, coming up with last year. We got the capital funding approved for this year's budget to push a driveway back to the poor, poor farm cemetery, which would be good all the way around once it's done. Um, the only people you might hear complain are the people that farm that field that we're going to be pushing a driveway through. Um, but it is, it's deeded, it's county property. And, it, you know, we're not doing anything out of our rights or anything, but um, highway is going to be doing that work for us. They went out and did the survey. They cut the trees. We're waiting on the town now to give us the, the permit for the driveway um, and size the culvert that we need there. And then the highway is going to get in there before they get going on all their other projects. And Do you know, Steve, where that is? Like far far? No, I don't. Yeah, it's off a, of, what is that, double, uh, double B? Double B. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yep, and uh, there was... The old poor farm there, uh, building is now private, um, but the the county, the uh, cemetery, cemetery part, can't give that away. Yeah, so that was landlocked. Well, we had an easement to it, but we let the farmer. Yeah. Right. You know, so, but if you were going to walk in there, it was not always simple. Yeah, you know, well, it, it, it came to a head a couple of years ago. Some of these groups are kind of interested in checking out these old graveyards and stuff in there. Their one, our only access was through this farmyard. You had to go through there between their barn and their greenery and everything and kind of go back there. They didn't care if we went back there, but when just general public people were going through there, you know, some of these people were wandering through the barns. Well, in this day and age, you, you can't have that. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. a different world. Yeah. yeah. So right. it's, it just, it wasn't, it wasn't right the way it was set up. And now, with a driveway pushed straight back there, it'll be easier for us. You know, it was always weird for us to explain it to our summer people. Like, well, you go through this guy's driveway, you know, and then you drive through the, drive through the corn field and try and knock down as little stuff as you can. And so, it, yeah. 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 And Do, uh, any family members ever contact you for access or yeah. 
Yeah, some people contact us when they're doing their ancestry stuff, you know, looking up their former yeah. their relatives and whatnot. And we've got okay records of what's out there and and uh, who's buried and where they're located and whatnot. And sometimes people want to come in and look at that stuff, and then they'll go out there and try and find it themselves. And yeah. I don't know how many graves you think there are out there. I don't know. The ones you can see, you know, the head, <laughs> the depressions. There's yeah. definitely a handful. <laughs> there are there's yeah. depressions. Yeah, there's quite a few. Yeah. Right. They look vaults. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of creepy. But it's, with, but it's, yeah, we're doing the right thing. Yeah. We're doing the right thing. You know, well, we're access. required to maintain that into perpetuity, you know. So, and uh, I think one of the things we'll have to do probably next year or something is put a new fence around that thing. Once you we mow that, do you? Oh, yeah. We have yeah, to yeah, mow it. Um, well, we always did it like about three times a year, you know, maybe a little more. We may have to do it a little more often with the driveway back in there. A more people will visit it, but seeing it, yeah. Yeah, because the last time I was out there, it wasn't more. So. Yeah, it, it, it's we uh, we always tried to get it for the big holidays, you know, Memorial and Fourth of July and everything. You know, it would be nice to have a fence around there too. Though. There is a dilapidated yeah, fence. Yeah, I but, know that, but yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. That that's something that's. Supposed to be there. Actually, do they put flags up? I don't know that there's any veterans out there. That would seem odd. Yeah, enough of them. None. Yeah. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I just so I point out the fact where it was. Yep. Because not yep. everyone's aware of our the old poor farm. You know what's system. interesting is the the 1950 census just came out. Yep. And yeah. you can look at that census on the poor farm and they have all the names of all the people that are there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I think the veterans department, they did, um, they have it, uh, all the cemeteries and then they're all listed too, who's buried sure. out there. Yeah, I've never seen one of those little bronze markers or anything out there. That doesn't mean there isn't a yeah. veteran down there or not. I, I don't, don't remember know. seeing one either the last yeah. time I was there. But. So that's what that is. Uh, just give you a heads up that's happening this year. I um, don't think I had anything else. Yeah, that's uh, pretty much where I'm at. Okay. Any other questions for Ann or John? Could I just add something to yeah, go ahead. Uh, the, yeah. oh, it was a real good discussion on the seasonal employee update, and it just occurred to me learning what your challenges are. I think as a member of the public, we're maybe going to have to accept that our local government can only address the core responsibilities and not the extra stuff for now, whatever that might be. Mm -hmm. Appreciate that, Steve. The understanding of that. Appreciate that very much. Uh, hearing nothing else on project Board updates. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the poor farm. Um, it's it got a beautiful building, by the way. It was a gorgeous building at one time, the poor farm. Was. Um, if you've never been inside of it. Uh, upcoming meetings. We've got the regular scheduled meeting for May 3rd at 9 a.m. Any problems with that for any of the board members here? If not, we'll make May 3rd and I'll entertain a motion to adjourn, please. I so move. Yeah. Second. Motion made and second, we are adjourned. And it is, uh, that's still live, so 938. I'm going to shut that up. Crop season is coming. I might not be here next meeting.